You're sitting in the middle of a cheering crowd. The arena around you is electric, fans hollering from their seats as they watch the basketball game. Every point scored, every shot missed, and every skillful pass of the ball sends waves of excitement over everyone in the audience. Applause, shouts, and chants fill the air. It distracts you for a moment. You find yourself swept up in the energy of the game. But slowly, surely, a nagging feeling creeps up on you as your eyes follow the ball. That feeling turns to a sickening realization as one of the players jumps and dunks the basketball, scoring another two points. You notice the look on his face. The same look on the faces of all the other players on the court. A solemn, hopeless expression. It's the same look of silent despair worn by all the spectators around you. Then you remember, you've watched this exact game of basketball before. Many, many times before. And that is when you feel the same hopeless expression appear on your own face, realizing just how long you have been here, watching this game over and over, reminded that you will never, ever leave this arena. Welcome to SCP-1733. To the untrained eye, SCP-1733 seems to be a completely harmless item. Stored in a digital video recorder, it is kept securely in the dusty depths of the SCP Foundation's video archives. If any researcher is given permission to study SCP-1733, they will find it to be an ordinary VHS tape. But what about the contents of said tape? Does it contain a bizarre, disconnected series of black and white video clips that when viewed only give the watchers seven days before the spirit of a drowned girl comes crawling out of their TV screen to kill them? Well, not exactly. But we're sure that if such a tape exists, the Foundation probably has it under lock and key, too. The footage on SCP-1733 is as seemingly banal as the ordinary VHS tape itself. When played, the viewer will witness a TV broadcast of a basketball game, specifically the 2010-2011 NBA season opener, broadcast on television and captured on tape by an unknown civilian. The game took place on the 26th of October 2010 in the TD Garden Arena in Boston, Massachusetts, a game where the hometown Boston Celtics took on the Miami Heat. By now, perhaps you are wondering what is so special about this particular game, and why the SCP Foundation would be so interested in keeping a VHS recording of it so secure. Is one of the O5 Council secretly a Celtics fan? Well, that's impossible to say for sure. What we do know for certain is that SCP-1733 is far more than just a harmless recording of a basketball game. The SCP Foundation first caught wind of SCP-1733's existence the day after the game. On October 27, a Boston native that had watched and recorded the game made comments on social media about a technical foul that the game's referee had failed to pick up on. According to this individual, during the third quarter, an instance of unsportsmanlike conduct took place between Ray Allen and Chris Bosch. The person making these claims was quickly ridiculed by commenters on the same thread. But then this person uploaded a clip of this foul from the footage they had recorded. The other commenters were dumbfounded. During the original broadcast, that foul had never happened, but the recording showed it clearer as day. The footage was quickly expunged and all traces of the clip removed from the internet by personnel acting on behalf of the SCP Foundation. Any that had viewed the video on Facebook or been a part of the comments debating this previously non-existent foul were tracked down via their IP addresses. All of them, including the owner of the tape, were given amnestics to wipe their memories of the supposed infraction, and SCP-1733 was returned to the Foundation for further analysis. Researchers at the Foundation were determined to understand the anomalous nature of SCP-1733, and why the footage contained on this particular VHS tape was so different from the basketball game's original broadcast. At first, the differences in the game seemed to be only slight changes from the one that actually aired on TV. A different foul here, a small point difference there. While the recording of the game contained on SCP-1733 was slightly different from the real-life game, perhaps even more interesting was that these differences changed with repeat viewings. Researchers wouldn't observe the same differences every time they watched SCP-1733, but would instead spot something different that had been changed each time they restarted the tape. 
and as they continued to watch and rewatch SCP-1733's footage, the true horror of the video's anomalous properties became more and more apparent. As the footage recorded on SCP-1733 began to diverge more and more from the original broadcast, researchers shifted their attention away from the basketball game itself and onto the people watching it. Just like the specifics of the game itself, the fans in the arena seemed to also change with every rewatch of the tape. And even stranger, the people in the crowd seemed to not only be aware of their existence within the footage, but also retain memories of every previous replayed vision. Each time the researchers had watched SCP-1733, the audience trapped within had gained more and more cognizance. Every man, woman, and child in the audience of that basketball game began remembering that they had seen multiple variations of the same game over and over again. This first became apparent to Foundation researchers when the game's commentators, two presenters named Mike and Tommy, began to comment on a strange sense of deja vu they were experiencing as they watched the Boston Celtics and Miami Heat play. Both seemed to share notions that the game they were witnessing was strangely familiar, and in later replays of the tape, these two commentator personalities were able to recall the events of the game with perfect, vivid accuracy. While they never addressed the viewer directly, this cumulative effect seems to have extended to every person that was present within the arena at the time that the original broadcast was recorded. Everyone, from the commentators to the coaches, the players to the patrons, all remember the diverging versions of the basketball game, but seem to have no awareness that they are trapped inside a recording on a VHS tape. It should be noted that it is still unclear whether the entities are real people or digital copies that solely reside on the tape. Every individual shown to be inside TD Garden on the 26th of October 2010 seems to be identical to their counterparts in the real world. Each of the basketball players on both the Boston Celtics and Miami Heat teams have the exact same level of talent as they do in reality and their individual mannerisms are perfectly recreated in the SCP-1733 footage. And the same is true of the fans in the audience, each one appearing to be, in every conceivable way, a living human being. But the most unnerving aspect of SCP-1733 was found when the Foundation agents were tasked with tracking down members of the audience who were seen on the tape, and they found nothing. Unlike the players and coaches who can quite easily be found in our world, with many of them still playing or involved with professional basketball, personnel were unable to find a single trace of any of the people from the audience, not one clue as to their current whereabouts or status. It is unclear how, but it appears that everyone shown on SCP-1733, especially those watching the game unfold from the stands, is a person trapped in digital form stuck watching variations of the same match on loop. Researchers at the SCP Foundation who were studying SCP-1733 initially theorized that the tape had been designed to display an infinite variety of different game outcomes. Given that the tactics utilized by the players were different with each playback of SCP-1733, this seemed to be the case, that the tape was showing a what-if scenario each time the tape was rewound and played from the start but the scenario wasn't resetting each time. It was clear that they were learning. By the 34th replay of the footage, the Boston Celtics and Miami Heat were so in tune with the opposing team's playbook that both sides' players were able to perfectly and precisely counter their opponent's moves and kept the score at 0-0 for much of the game. At this stage in the Foundation's research, the players on the SCP-1733 tape had not yet become fully aware that they had played the same game already in earlier playbacks. But it is possible that weak memories of the earlier versions of the same match manifested as instinctive ways players could counter the moves of their rival team. However, by the time Foundation researchers had replayed the SCP-1733 footage 45 times, the players, their coaches, and fans watching the game had become aware of what was happening to them. It was at this point that the digital recording from TD Garden changed dramatically. Realizing that they'd been playing the same game of basketball over and over, the players refused to participate any longer. Everyone in the audience began to attempt to escape from the tape where they'd been unknowingly imprisoned, but not a single one of the stadium's doors would budge and neither the fans nor the players seemed to be able to leave through any other exit out of TD Garden. 
Over the following playbacks of the SCP-1733 videotape, attempts at escape grew increasingly daring. In one playback, a full-scale riot broke out. In another, makeshift explosives were built and used by those trapped to try and blast their way to freedom. As their cognition grew and they began to remember friends and family from outside the videotape, the crowd trapped in SCP-1733 grew even more desperate. Players and their coaches retired to locker rooms, withdrawing from the crowd for a time. The rest of the people in the footage began to form factions amongst themselves, one of the more prominent calling themselves the Faith Keepers. These individuals voiced their belief that they had been confined to TD Garden as some form of spiritual punishment as a result of the consumerism that is rife in a post-industrial society. The Faith Keepers began burning offerings in the center of the basketball court. Phones, wallets, car keys, anything that reminded them of the modern world. Over the subsequent playbacks of SCP-1733, the Faith Keepers grew in their numbers, indoctrinating more of the crowd into their movement. Those still trying to escape from the stadium were causing more damage to themselves than their enclosure, with three men caught in the blast of another crude bomb placed on an exit door. Unfortunately for them, the door barely showed a scratch in the aftermath of the detonation. As Foundation researchers continued replaying the tape, those trapped within SCP-1733 descended into depraved acts, and incidences of violence became rampant. Some even attempted to take their own lives in acts of desperation, jumping from balconies in the hopes of ending the loop. Those that had joined the growing ranks of the Faith Keepers did not engage in such behavior, instead creating makeshift curtains to separate themselves from the breakdown that was taking place among the others trapped within the SCP-1733 tape. At some point beyond the 112th playback of the videotape, the Faith Keepers marched off scream and brought the basketball teams back out onto the main court. They then began a ritualistic sacrifice, disemboweling the professional athletes for their fellow prisoners to see. This had no noticeable effect, with the recording of the game resetting as it had done in earlier rewatches. In a later playback, the Faith Keepers then began to call for all the children in the stadium to be sacrificed in the same way. Testing on SCP-1733 was finally suspended indefinitely after this point, and as far as we know, the crowd remains trapped inside the anomalous recording of this particular Celtics Heat basketball game. Foundation researchers have been unable to produce the same anomalous effects as those of SCP-1733, even when using the DVR that originally produced the recording. The digital video recorder itself does not seem to imprint the same properties onto other VHS tapes making SCP-1733 an isolated anomaly. However, the next time you find yourself at a basketball game, it might be worth asking yourself, have I seen this game before? Now check out SCP-1861, the crew of the HMS Wintersheimer, and SCP-1337, the Hitchhiker, for more chilling tales from the SCP Foundation.